people have no idea that there's two different men. That there's the person, Robert, there's the persona, R. Kelly. Go ahead on, break them off with a little previews of the remix. R. Kelly, widely regarded as the king of R&B, known for songs like Ignition. But his ex-wife, Drea Kelly, says lurking behind that Playboy image, there's a more sinister persona. Here I am, his principal dancer, choreographer, on stage, right next to him. And people have no idea that this man just beat me on the bus. People have no idea of the bruises I'm hiding. Drea claims she was a victim herself of emotional, physical, and sexual abuse at the hands of Robert Kelly. Did you ever fear for your life? Yes. You thought he might kill you? Yeah. Your kids? No. But me, definitely. Their tumultuous relationship initially began with a love for his music. Thoing and thawing video, there's a part in there where I'm dressed as a geisha. This is around the time when Matrix came out, so I put the Matrix move in the video. There she is, front and center, his wife of 13 years and mother to his three children. Why did you decide now? Summer of 2017 hits. All these allegations start coming out again, and I'm like, God, I don't think I can take this one. We're going to begin this half hour with those disturbing allegations against R. Kelly. He texted R. Kelly to let my daughter free. Those claims stem from a BuzzFeed article detailing allegations from two parents who say their daughter was being held against her will by Kelly. The article also alleges that six women live in properties rented by Kelly in Chicago and the Atlanta suburbs and that he controls every aspect of their lives. Charges that Kelly and several of the women, including the daughter of the concerned parents, have denied. Those allegations have sparked a movement. Celebrities like John Legend and Viola Davis joining the call to hashtag mute R. Kelly, demanding that people stop playing and promoting his music. Apple Music removed him from their featured playlists. And after months of silence, R. Kelly released this 19-minute song called I Admit. I'm so falsely accused. Tell me, how can you judge when you never walked in my shoes? What do you make of his song, I Admit? That is the dumbest thing he's ever done. Because you didn't admit anything. That was the classic narcissistic response. The pair first met more than 20 years ago in their mutual hometown of Chicago. R. Kelly, at the time 27 years old, had just skyrocketed to number one with his breakout hit, Bump and Grind. He was about to embark on his first tour as a solo performer and was auditioning backup dancers. I remember I danced the paint off the wall. They started clapping and he was like, uh, you got the job. Just 19 years old, it was her dream gig. Andrea says she would quickly rise from backup to principal dancer and eventually choreographer. Shortly thereafter, she says her then boss would seek a more intimate relationship. I do remember when he said he fell in love. He said I was sitting on the back of the two of us reading the Bible. He said, and you remind me of my mama. At this point, you hadn't seen any kind of indication that there may be any kind of violence or rudeness. No, but what I did see is a man was very controlling. R. Kelly would continue to climb the Billboard charts, soon becoming a household name with the release of this crossover mega hit. I believe I can fly. After I Believe I Could Fly, we were married, but at that point I had seen him go from just an all-black audience knowing who he was to now you're doing Space Jam, you're getting Grammy nods, winning Grammys. All right, Kelly, I believe I could fly. Oh, wow. At a certain point, your marriage started going down. When was that point? When I was pregnant with my first child, he locked me in a bathroom and I slept in a bathtub. Outwardly, Kelly was the portrait of a doting father. Cradling his baby girl Joanne in Celine Dion's I'm Your Angel. And even though they would go on to have two more children, Drea says their marriage was crumbling. And then in 2002... R. Kelly was charged today with 21 counts of child pornography. A tape emerges, <laughs> reportedly showing R. Kelly engaged in sexual acts with a minor. When the videos surfaced and the allegations surfaced, uh, the child pornography charges... Did you believe it? No. I'm thinking to myself, that's impossible. But again, he kept me very sheltered. Did some part of you have a nagging suspicion? I'm too busy dealing with my own abuse. If it's early in the morning. A 
around this time, R. Kelly would sit down for an interview with ABC News. People need to understand that R. Kelly is not who they think, but it's who I know, you know. I'm not perfect. He would face trial for multiple charges of child pornography and be acquitted on all counts. But at home, Drea says her husband grew more controlling and easily angered. There's no let's talk about it like a regular couple, you know? No, it's his way or the highway, period. It was a seemingly ordinary scenario that Drea claims led to her being attacked, restrained, and ultimately hogtied by Kelly. And he took the rope tight and he tied my arms behind my back. And then he took my legs. And he tied my legs and my hands and arms together. And I just remember laying on the side of the bed crying like, let me go, just untie me, let me go. And he fell asleep with me on the side of the bed like an animal. In 2005, you file this order of protection, but then a few weeks later, you withdraw it. Why'd you withdraw it? Fear. He's a powerful man. At this time, he's at the top of his game. So now I get this order of protection and it dawns on you, this is not bulletproof. Eventually, she says a series of altercations while on vacation in Miami led to her breaking point when she almost tried to end her life. What happened there? What, what kept you? First, God put my kids. So I remember I climbed out on the balcony and I looked down and it was like God allowed me to see my body was laying in blood and I prayed. God, okay, I need an answer, and I need it now. And he told me to get my laptop, of all things, and type in domestic violence. I take the survey, and of the 17 things on the list, Robert had already done 15. Drea says she was determined to leave, fleeing with her three children to her father's home. In 2006, she filed for divorce. Have you thought about changing your last name? No. You don't mind the association still with being a Kelly? Well, when people say association, that's like a club or fraternity or whatever. I paid for my name in blood, sweat, and tears, literally. Nobody knows what it was like to be Drea Kelly. Drea Kelly is strong. Drea Kelly is a survivor. Drea Kelly made it away from Robert Kelly. In response to the allegations made by Drea, R. Kelly's manager told ABC News they have no comment. When was the last time you did have contact with him? Oh, what? So long ago, I can't even remember. Drea is now a full-time mom. Her three children, Joanne, Jai, and Robert, all live close by, just outside of Los Angeles. That is my world. I call them my eggs. If you go on any of my social media, everybody sees hashtag my eggs. Her eggs are now all grown up, from 16 to 21 years old. They are well aware about the headlines about their dad and say his past has sometimes led to them being bullied at school. How would you handle it when people might say something nasty to you? Um, I just, I know that it doesn't have anything to do with me. Do you all have any contact at all with your dad? No. No. Not me. And it's been a long time. Any message for dad at all? Hi. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, what now? What's next for you? Everything. <laughs> now to be able to fearlessly tell my story and to shout it from the mountaintops. Wow, that's, words can't even describe that. At the end of the day, we don't have to keep talking about the storm. It's about how you come out of it. Drea has now become an advocate for victims of domestic abuse. The healing process is never ending. And I think that's the misconception that people think that, how did you heal from it? I'm healing every day. But what have you learned about yourself through all of this? What I have learned is that I'm a vessel. I know now that I'm being used for something greater than me. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.